consider yourself normal, then this is not the show for you. Please go somewhere else. This is WYRD. If it's getting weird, it's got to be the Weird Mountain Gals Show. You're listening to Byron and Alicia, the Weird Mountain Gals. We're starting. Uh, man, I wish I'd thought to get those jingle bells out of the other room. I'd have done jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Uh, so, and then it just threw it just threw me completely off. So, I knocked. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I could put some digital jingle bells <laughs> in the background. Here, let oh me do my, that now. Oh my gosh! <laughs> anyway, how are you? I'm jingle belled out. How about you? <laughs> oh my goodness! I well, I'm not too. Ju- I'm yawning too. I'm not too jingle belled at this point because I've not been out in the world very much. So I've not been laid over with all the Christmas songs because I just hadn't. I hadn't been anywhere. I've been home doing all the stuff I should have done in August and September. So huh? yeah, I'm good. I'm. I'm just. I'm still. I know everybody's tired of hearing me say this. I'm just tired. You know, there isn't. <laughs> my list is long as your arm, and and I keep knocking stuff off of it, and then I look at it again and go, "Well, I never did go get my new glasses. Well, I never did. But by golly, I knocked one thing, two things off my list yesterday, and I'm just gonna brag about it because that's just all there is to it. So we have on our in our driveway this white oak tree that is older than Methuselah. And the fellow that owned this house that we bought this house from, I think anyway, uh, he hated that tree and he topped it and poured poison in the top of it. Oh, 40 years ago, 40 oh. years. Ago. And, and, and cause he wanted to kill it. Well, it didn't kill it. It made it a little weird, but I mean, here it is 40 years later. And that darn thing has gotten so wide, you know, like its little arms just stretch out and out and out. (laughs) That was touching the neighbor's roof and it's touching our roof. I know. Not good. Not good. But health, a pretty healthy tree. We had an arborist come look at it uh, last year, I guess. And he said, well, that's a pretty healthy tree. I mean, it's old, but it's pretty healthy. So a friend of mine, Denise Mills, hey, Denise, uh, her son works for this tree trimming company. She said, I'll just call him. He'll do it. Well, they have been, this was the third time they were supposed to show up to do this tree. And the first time, two of them were sick. And the next time we were scheduled, the other two were sick. Oh. And, And come to find out, and they're all, you know, strapping young probably early 30s fellows. They all have children. And so every time one of them, every time they all get well, one of them has a young and who brings something home and then they all get it. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, they have been sick off and on, which is everything you can imagine. But they so we scheduled it and they showed up yesterday. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we had so much fun watching them in it, like monkeys in a tree. It was oh. wild. And they, they cut out all the dead stuff, of course. Yeah. Then they trimmed back the stuff they had to be trimmed back off the two roofs. Okay. And then they they cabled some of the bigger limbs into the main trunk. Oh, okay. So that, so that if they, you know, if they, so they won't just break off and fall in the road or on a house or whatever. Right. But it was fascinating to watch them work. And there was a pile of debris in our driveway and they brought their own chipper. I mean, they're a professional group. They they had insurance and everything. It wasn't just a bunch of yahoos from West Buncombe who climb up skinny up a tree and start start using a chainsaw. No, I so used it, one of those guys one time. Oh yeah. Well and, we uh, used one of those the last time we had a tree taken down. He did a great job. But this one 
that that tree was in the backyard and if it had fallen it wouldn't have fallen on anything that mattered but this one yeah this this yeah. Is some pros so yeah. let me see if I, I, let me see if i can call their name out there craggy mountain tree service i believe is the name of nice it. well i really appreciate you telling me that because we've got some trees that as far as i know have never been looked at or dealt with in any way they're still uh -huh. basically wild and i was yeah. looking the other day and you know they've got some branches going straight out that are bigger than most trees yeah and they're right over you know important things like other people's houses yep. um so yeah that's gonna, well, it's they, gonna have to get dealt with these youngins ain't cheap i'll tell you that for nothing they also took down a dead mulberry tree uh, but e efficient, they were done by early afternoon. And it looks, I mean, I went out to it. You know how crazy I am. I went, went out yesterday morning and I put both my hands on the tree and leaned into it. And I said, okay, now listen, I know you're sleeping, but you're about to get a haircut. When you wake up in the spring, there's going to be, it's going to feel different, but it's good. It's all good. So I go back to sleep now because it's going to happen today. And just shh, it, good, good night. Happy souls. To sleep. Yeah, we'll see the you when you wake up. I yeah. think I'm just crazy as a toad. Uh, you know, I do some crazy things like that, too. We had one that was dead and the stump was, you know, pretty big. And it was it was getting it was rotting and it was doing what it should do, but the OCD other person could not stand it. Yeah, and, and so the decision got made that it was going to be leveled or taken out. And I went out there the morning before, and I was I was just smacking on that stump. I was like, "If there's anybody down there living, you need to move right now." <laughs> and we've got a place over here and you know what they did move right into uh, the grill oh <laughs> and now they've got their system established again and we can all live with it because they we've got several stumps in the yard that, that we're going to keep that way and they have a tunnel system and they live in the roots of these stumps wow and by they i mean uh most people would not want them in their yard they're chipmunks um, yeah, I but, wouldn't want them in my yard. I'm glad they're in your yard. They're, it's fine in our yard because I don't grow food there because it's too much shade. And so they aerate the yard. And uh, they thus far, it hasn't really been a bad situation. I, I mean, you know, I've lived there 30 years and never had a real, never had a problem other than they decided they were going to go live in the grill. <laughs> And I know that um, unless we we take precautions because there's so many squirrels and so many chipmunks and we live very close to the animal shelter and we also live uh, fairly close to the, uh, the, I don't know what you call it, the landfill. And so there are a lot of critters even though it's, it's a suburban area, but there's a lot of critters and so you have to make sure that they don't decide to live in your car up in your engine and stuff <laughs> well, i've seen them where oh, they'll, they will they will do yeah, that absolutely we'll see we'll see them uh going back and forth to a one of the cars and go and look under the hood and there'll be you know 25 acorns there and or or else there'll be something getting ready to build a nest there and it's like you got to be careful of stuff like that and there are ways to deal with it so that everybody can all get along and with us it's just you stay out of our house and and we're not going to poison you or hurt you and you can we'll find you other place to live you know <laughs> yeah. and that's pretty in my mind that's the deal that got made and really most of the critters go by it except for those damn stink bugs and yeah. they, they're lawless the rogues. They are. Yep. Yep, they really are. So so tell me, tell me what else is going on in Byron Land. Well, I've um, I made the flight arrangements for my trip to Scotland in March. 
That was fun. And that yeah. was uh that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. But I also did something I've never in my whole life done. What is and that? that is I, I paid for trip cancellation insurance because I just don't trust the airlines anymore. Yeah. How can you? Yeah. Yeah. So I did that and I hated to pay extra, but, uh, but I, I balanced that with, I usually check a bag and flying overseas now. Cause you're now nothing is free. Right. Now I get a free carry on, but if I check a bag, it's seventy five damn dollars. Check and a bag? To check a bag, seventy five dollars. What are your pocketbook dimensions? Oh well they don't tell you any of that. Okay. Uh but yeah, no, so I can bring on a small wheeled carry on and um and also my personal bag, so that's, that's good. I'll be good. I, we're not even going to be gone two weeks, so I don't need you a whole lot of club. Yeah, no, you can do it. No, I've spent I've spent a month in um, Britain with as much clothes as I will pack for this trip. So it doesn't matter. It'll be I, fine. But I, I sure wasn't paying 100 because it would have been $150 coming and going. Right. I had a friend who didn't have much money but really liked to travel. And... um he would go and he wouldn't pack really anything, maybe a day's worth. And he'd have a, maybe a fanny pack or whatever the hell a man would carry, you know, yeah. a backpack. Um, and when he would get to town, he would go to the thrift store and buy his wardrobe. Yeah. I've got a good oh. friend doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, and then at the end of it, he would just donate it back. Yeah. And he, he had these, um, as a matter of fact, that's how I heard about them. I've got these travel bags. I was working on my, you know, I've got a real uh, obsession, I guess. I'm not, I don't hoard everything. But evidently, in a past life, I needed a bag to save my life and couldn't find one. Because now <laughs> I've got bags everywhere, so... I've been cleaning bags out and I've been stuffing the bags full of bags, right? Yeah. And I remembered I've got this stuff and I need to either all give it to you or tell you how to get some. And it's really thin five uh cloth and, and it's a zip up bag, but when it folds, you fold it if it's empty, it's about the size of one of those ziploc bags. Uh-huh. And you can put two of those in, in a pocketbook or something. And end up, and they turn out to be full size bags. Oh, nice! So, and boy, are they strong! And so that that is something. If you want mine, you are welcome to, because I'm not going to be using them for a while. Um, and I'll, but we'll have to go back through the bags to get to. Them. <laughs> <laughs> They're bright red. <laughs> oh, good. Yep. That's well, the I've, been, I've got <laughs> to the place now because you know. I now I feel like a traveling salesman because I travel all the time. So I just don't, I'm just not bothered with it. And I'm traveling with a, a good friend of mine who was an editor on several of my books. She's so excited. Oh my gosh, she is so excited. And she said, I've already packed three or four times. Oh, so, that's awesome. And I don't, you know, I just don't even think about it really anymore, especially when I'm traveling to Britain because I bring, I bring like four pairs of socks and every night I wash a pair of socks and I bring two pairs of pants and I'm wearing a pair of pants. That's three pairs of pants. And I bring a long sleeve turtleneck and then I bring some, a couple t-shirts and a couple sweaters and toiletries. And, and that's about it. Yeah. And that's all, that's all I really need. Cause what about you? Mostly, Mostly when I'm going over there, I'm, you know, I'm doing field research. So I'm not in the same place more than two or three days. And and, and people get sick of my green sweater. I don't care. What, what about shoes? Oh, if you're going well, for two weeks, do you just have one pair of shoes? Oh, no, because of my feet. You know, my princess in the pea feet. Now, yeah. I have to pack at least one pair of shoes and have a pair of shoes that I'm wearing. At least two, and be prepared yeah. to buy shoes when I'm there. Yeah, and that's just the truth of it. Because I never know how my feet are going to be. 
and a pair of shoes that felt really good yesterday. I'm not put them on today, and my feet will go. Nah, I don't know about these. I feet get don't that. feel right. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's why I've got I've got so many pairs of shoes, and it just it feels silly to have so many shoes. But when my feet ain't happy, ain't nothing on my body happy. And that I is just that. the truth of it. And they, so, they say about, because I'm a Pisces, they say, you know, Pisces and feet. And it is just the absolute truth. I think maybe you're right. I knew another Pisces like that. So what do you think about this weather? Has it caused you to have bone aches or joint aches? or? I, I am so, in the pre-show, y'all, we were talking about how lucky we sometimes feel. Well, always feel. Yeah. I feel pretty damn lucky that I am almost 67 years old and things don't ache on me. I mean, my feet do sometimes, uh, but I'm just, I'm not an achy person. And I'm so grateful for that because I know people half my age that are dealing with the kind of pain that put my ass in Broughton. I mean, just terrible stuff. Yeah. I, I feel for them. And me sometimes too. I feel like them. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I right now I'm dealing with an elbow that is oh, honey. just crying out, you know, and I I have to think I I guess it just must be this weather coming in, I guess. <laughs> because I, I guess it's cold supposed to be cold as whiz. Do what? It's supposed to be cold as whiz. Yeah, I know. Right now, uh I want to say I, I guess we're in the 40s probably. Yeah, it oh, no, doesn't feel bad. 39, it says. But, yeah, um, I'm going I'm to run the last of my errands today that I got to do. I'm going to run up to Weird Mountain and, you know, leave the water dripping and open the cabinet and turn the heat big up, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Well, I'm still I'm still running, just a little bit of running and not, not too much, and then I'm done until yeah, uh, Christmas. But, you know... From what I understand, we're, we here in Western North Carolina are going to start feeling the temperature drop later tonight. Yes. And then that means that everybody west of us has already been through some major. Yes. Yeah. And it looks like it's really going to be awful. And I say awful. I, by that, I mean, I have a respect for this weather. Because it will yeah. kill you if you don't take yeah. it seriously. And we are not used to this kind of cold around here. Nope. It's gonna be it's gonna be below zero cold with the wind chill. Right. And I feel that it'll be icy because we've had a lot of fog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know. Yeah, I'm not um uh, and you know, so we're so damn crazy. Mm -hmm. Anybody with any sense would head south where it's gonna be warm. No, -uh, not us. We're going to go up in the high country when it's where it's even going to be colder. <laughs> but I ain't leaving the damn house. I'm going to be in there cooking and all that stuff. Well, good. Right, See, that's writing my new book. Who knows what I'm going to be doing? Something getting into something. I'm sure. No, <laughs> me. I never do that. Well, I'm going to have a quiet Christmas. Good. <clears throat> I am off. I'll go see some relatives, you know, and I'll go hang out with mom. And I just basically am going to, you know, take it as it comes. Uh, Schedule-wise, there's always too much. And so I'm just not even going to stress on it. I've got my list of things, and I'm going to try and try to have it not keep me up at night. <laughs> when yeah, I have I'm an unfinished list of important things that I need to do, it yeah, will keep me, too. me up at night. It, uh, me too. Really? And stuff that I worry about, worry about, worry about. And then I wake up in the morning and go, why were you so worried about that? Crazy. And I, ha I have this thing I, I say to myself, you know, like many people my age, I've got to get up about 3.30 in the morning and go to the bathroom. And inevitably, I will wake up and then immediately my brain is like, well, but you haven't you haven't scheduled that new bivalent vaccine yet. You haven't done that. You haven't, done, you haven't done this. You haven't done that. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and what I say to myself is, this is the hour of the wolf. And yeah. in the hour of the wolf, 
the whole pack comes out at once to stalk me. Mm. And it's like, and I ain't listening to you because all I got to do is go to the bathroom and pee. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> and sometimes that actually works. I mean, it doesn't always. You know, I've got some of y'all know if you follow me on Facebook, I just signed a contract for a new book. And this book, you know, mostly I write books because, oh, boy, I want to find out about this thing and I'm going to do some research and I'm going to write about it and I'll know more about it. That's that is my whole kind of thesis. Or like with the Appalachian stuff, it's like people need to know we're not just a bunch of yahoos. We have real like culture and stuff. Um, but this book is a book. And so I'm just like, oh, yeah, I write that. That'll be fine. <laughs> but this book is it's uh, it's psychological. It's it's a subject I know well, but I don't know if I can write about it the way I want to write about it. So it it does kind of I'm gonna, I'm going to be honest. It kind of scares me. Well, I think it's I think it's exactly where you should be inside. I way. do, too. And I think it's exactly it's a book that is needed right now. Yeah. But, you know, that book on Tower Time, Earthworks, that was needed when it came out in 2018. Still needed, to be honest. Um, Can I ask you something about that since you brought yeah, it up? Sure. Yeah. I have wondered, and I had just haven't asked you, what got you started with what made you decide you were going to write a book about Tower Time? And why <laughs> did you call it Tower Time? Well, I, I mean, I think I know part of the answer. Yeah, I think it, it's a pretty old story at this point. I've been but talking about people that don't know. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Um, I have been uh, y'all. And if you thought it was crazy talking to an oak tree, hang on to your drawers. <laughs> so since Did the they left- hear that part of the conversation. <laughs> so or did you tell on us? <laughs> what about the oak about tree? The, no, I yeah. said that. I said okay. that out loud. Okay. Um, so in the late 1990s, I started having dreams and waking visions of the tower card in the traditional tarot. And um and I just thought, well, it's time for you to really re-up your practice and do more tarot readings. You know, I thought about what, is it, what does it mean practically? I didn't think of it as an omen necessarily. So, Did you get a feeling at the time? Yes. Uh, but, I mean, again, I'm a Pisces. My feet hurt, and I always got my feelings. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I just kept having it both awake and asleep and uh, and and it wasn't enough to you know make me go to a doctor and get medication but it it was like I, the world the universe is trying to remind you of something and you need to pay better attention it's where i came from okay well then september the 11th happened and i went well how much more of a of an omen do you need than that missy Ooh. And so then I started talking about it and talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. And in about 20, let's see, that that book came out. God, was it just 2018? Yeah. Uh, Really? I think it was. No. (laughs) Well, anyway, maybe. I don't know. It it was fairly recent anyway. I could run in and get the copy and look at it. Yeah. Um, I can find it. And so about 2017, I guess, you know, the country was in turmoil then. And we had elected a celebrity Yahoo for president. And I don't care who has a complaint about that. He's a celebrity Yahoo, whether you like him or not. Um, And I just felt like I needed I'd been talking about this so much. I wanted to write it down as a book. So that book is called Earthworks, and it's a book of essays. And the second half of the book is all kind of rituals and ceremonies that, you know, to help you deal with what's going on. But May 1st, I, 2018. You're right. Yeah, there we go. There I was so, questioning the author of the book. Oh, no, it couldn't be then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, so I wrote it. I wrote it then, and I still I teach a lot about it, about what you can do, and, and all that. Um, but yeah, that's what that's all about. And it, the I can't remember what the subtitle 
originally was. Um, and somebody said, well, why don't you just call it the Tower Time book? Because that's what you, you've been talking about that for years. And I, so then it became Earthworks uh, Ceremonies in Tower Time. Yeah. So that's the Tower Time book. It still sells pretty darn well, I got to tell you. It's uh, It has a beautiful cover. That was one of yeah, the things that I noticed about it. And let's see if I can call the name of the woman, Susan. Oh, and she's such a brilliant designer. But she makes almost, she made not enough money being a designer to upgrade her damn design suite on the computer. Isn't that awful? Because yeah, it's, it's so awful. expensive. It's well, so that's, expensive. Uh, that's so understandable. I can say yeah, like Absolutely. And so she gave it up. She did, also did my Willendorf book. Oh, oh God, okay. I feel so bad. I can't remember her last name. Well, but, at some point you will, and we'll make sure and yeah. send her some credit on the. Yeah, she she's so good, and she's such a good human being. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You, I love when you're able to align yourself with somebody like that. Uh, yeah, that's always going to be my preference, yeah. always. It, it feels good. It feels correct. That's yes, it does. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, so that's that's interesting to know. I have, I, I knew part of the story and I didn't know all of it. So, did you have a growing feeling that you were supposed to bring that message out to the world, or yes. was it, or was it more yes. of a, okay, so you didn't logic your way to that decision. Oh, uh, again, I, I, I hate to keep blaming all this stuff on being a Pisces, but <laughs> that's not how Pisces does anything. Okay. We do it like, oh, this is this is a big deal and people need to know. And then, you know, I got all that other double Scorpio, which instead of going, this is a big deal, goes, damn it, you need to be paying attention to this. Yeah. Here, here's a book. <laughs> well, there you go. I, it really does feel like that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yep, yep. Yeah, so and this glad. new book, this new book, which I can't tell you the title of just yet, is um, is about finding finding the goddess or goddesses, finding the divine feminine, um, in the wilderness, and it's it's going to require me to spend a lot of time at Joyce Kilmer. Oh, and hey. so it's going to be, and it's going to be psychological uh, wilderness. It's going to be about truly doing shadow work and not shadow work, not being you dressing up like a pretend shaman and playing <laughs> at shadow work, but actually dealing with your stuff. Oh, that reminds me. I'm glad you said that. Although saying that makes me just go, oh God, oh God, here we go. Somebody asked me or to ask you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> Somebody wants you to blah blah. Yeah, go ahead. No. They want to know your opinion on croning, and I said, "What do you mean her opinion on it?" And they said, "Well, does she think it's a real thing?" A real thing? Or was this person just an idiot? Well, this person is new to the craft. Oh, uh, and how old is this person? Young, young, eleven, fifteen, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Well, well, about this about person can, this person can come talk to me after they've gone through their first Saturn return. Anyway, um, um, well, I guess while I'm just doing my relentless self promotion, I will say that I now write a Chrome column for Sage Woman magazine, and of course, it is a real thing. And the concept that a woman who has stopped breeding, breeding, being breedable, would somehow have still have power and authority in the world is an ancient one, which we ignore in this culture for the most part. Yeah. But you get together with with women who have not bled in over a year and you get together with some sources of power that nuclear fusion cannot yeah. even so once you are no longer responsible for ovum and uh, sperm creating new life on the planet, by God, you got some other big work to do. You you went right to the heart of a lot of it. Yeah, a, well, a lot of it. 
I mean, women right now, when I watch any kind of sort of secular TV, I'm going to call it, it ain't British mysteries, it's secular TV. And the commercials are all about, and this is all over my damn social media feed too, how, oh, you don't want to look old. You've got to be young forever. Oh, no. Look, look, here's a way for you not to look old. Yeah. And the people that they are saying that about are people who have just hit 30. It's like, oh, you don't want to, you know, you need to get some special expensive cream because you might get crow's feet around your eyes. Well, yeah. crow's feet around your eyes mean you smile a certain way and how good that you've been smiling for so long. It makes a little dance in your face. And also yeah. you get crow's feet because you're outside yeah. and you are, are squinting into the sun and you got yeah. the wind. So it says a whole lot about you. But what we deal with in our culture constantly is if a woman is not breedable, she has no value. And so the you know, and, and subconsciously, I, yes, a lot well, of that is subconscious. It's just yeah, it's there. In and the a lot system. of women have completely absorbed that. Yeah, without even so realizing I, it. Yeah. So oh no, I can't look old because what? Yeah. I mean, the way I put it is, I'll go to these festivals and. It's it's August and it's hot and I've been on the road for months and I look at myself in the mirror and go, well, I mean, you are 66 years old and you didn't come here to run for, you know, Miss America beauty pageant. You came here to teach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a good. comfortable place, I think. I like it. Yeah. Well, I just remember all those years and this is true for me. It's not true for everybody. All those years of waiting for the first day of my period, just waiting for it because it was going to mark whether or not I was pregnant. And it doesn't matter how good the birth control you use is. None of it's a hundred percent. Right. So on the day that, um, when that did happen and I am blessed to have my one child, I was aware this is a life changing event. Mm -hmm. This isn't, this isn't about playing around. This is big. Right. Yeah, and, and it was and after a year and a few months of waiting for, okay, it's day 27, it's day 28, 29. What? I got clean panties still? Oh, this is great. <laughs> yes, it was. I, I was thrilled. There's a story attached to it, which I'm not going to say. <laughs> on the I will not. No, 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 no. But yeah, no, it's the greatest feeling ever. It really yeah. is. It is. It is. And my, in my in my wild days, that was a genuine concern. Yeah. It was because I wasn't as careful as I should have been. Well, I don't know many people who have been. No, me either. Me either. So yeah. If, so well, if we, and not we, everybody is meant to be a parent. But a lot no, of them are anyway. I was going to say, God knows some of them that are parents shouldn't be parents. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. I have never not one time uh, regretted my choices about that because Good. it felt yeah. absolutely like the right thing. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine uh, the responsibility involved and what how that would be. Yeah. 24-7. Oh, yeah. You know, so I think in some ways I'd be a super good mom, but in other ways, no, I don't think I would be. So therefore, well, you know what? And, I didn't. I did not breathe. And, and there's lots of, lots of things that you would be super good at that you choose not to do. Right. That's right. And that's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Like, I think sometimes I would be the best grocery bagger in the world. I would do everyone balanced so that they all weighed about the same and I'd get the heavy stuff in the bottom and I wouldn't put the bread underneath cantaloupe. Yeah. I would do all that kind of stuff. I mean, now I bag my own groceries, so I don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I'd be a, I'd be a hell of a bagger. I'd be hell of a front of house burger joint person. I'd be great at that. I'm good at retail. I'm real good at retail. Just because I'm good at it doesn't mean that's what I should be doing. No, you probably at some point would get frustrated with it about five minutes in. Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I worked in a bookstore for years and I loved that. 
And I even had, I had some of the hard, they would leave the kind of tricky, hard customers for me because mm-hmm. I would just, I just act like their servant, you know? I am here to make sure you get the books that you need for your book club or your grandchildren or whatnot. You just tell me all about them and we'll find them the perfect book. And I didn't, I didn't have my ego involved in all that. It was just like, you just tell me what those young ones like and we will find them books. That's and these were people that were, you know, they could be bitchy and demanding. And I was just like, yep, I'll take them. Yep. yep. <laughs> bring, bring her over to me. I'll help her find what she needs. Yeah. I never did mind it either. So, yeah. I am pretty patient. I mean, after, me. I'll take it back. After a while, it got very old. Okay. Because we had like 24 hours to respond to anything, a comment or, or any written comment uh, that any customer made. And if we didn't, oh. we could lose our signage for that. We could lose our franchise for that. Uh, not to mention the special inspection things and all that stuff. Uh, so it was after a while that got old. Okay, we are back. We are back. Where did we and- go? <laughs> <laughs> Well, anybody who knows us knows we took a break and went to the bathroom. That's what we do. That's our job. You know, we probably ought to say a word about this weather in the sense of how cold it's about to get. Yeah, get out of my brain. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Okay. Well, um, for for some of you who are not like uh, East Coast and and all that, we – we're about to have some big old cold weather coming through. Yeah. And people are, uh, I hope they're taking it seriously. People often don't take stuff seriously that I think they should. Yeah. But it's going to get cold. It's going to get below zero. Not just below freezing, but below zero. Right. Keep your animals indoors. Yes. If you can. Uh, if I mean, just you need to keep them indoors if you can. Yes. And if not, you need to make some really good provisions for them. Yes. Uh, so if you are, if you, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more than that about that. But that's that's good. Take that's care good. and make sure you've got uh, a way to stay warm if the power goes out, and make yep. sure that you keep your water dripping. Just keep your water dripping. Open up those cabinets underneath. And just trust me, just do it. It's not going to hurt anything. It. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. You're um, not going to lose enough water to affect your water bill. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, you don't take precautions and your pipes freeze and then they fall. <laughs> yeah. That's what hurt you, my brother. That's right. That's going to do a lot of damage and cost a lot of money. Yeah. And, so, and, and for those who are in the city, I'm, I really am unaware of what advice to give you because I don't know, I don't know what kind of things are in place up there. And I just know that take it seriously. I know you're used to having cold weather and storms and stuff, but from what I understand, this thing is heading right, right there. It's just going to smack the United States in the upper uh, quadrant there. It does not sound good. No, and all those folks that are used to, I'm thinking about my friends up in Michigan and Wisconsin, Minnesota. You know, they're they're used to cold weather, so it's going to be cold, and they'll be like, yeah, it's cold, and all you people south of here just need to, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah, calm down. Just calm down. <laughs> calm down, ma'am. Well, but, and it's true, though, we do – we do kind of have a big reaction to weather events down here. And part of it is because we are never as prepared as we should be. Well, and and because we would not want a city the size of Asheville to invest in the sort of equipment they have in Chicago for a weather event that might happen every other year. That would just be a huge waste of tax money. Or, or even less often. Yes. Even less often. So that's exactly right, too. So, so all, all those people have moved here from somewhere else, and they're like, well, I don't know why my road hadn't been salted and plowed yet. 
It's because you don't want to have to pay the where, taxes are already too high here. You don't want to have mm-hmm. to pay the kind of taxes yeah, to have, you're right. to have us perpetually ready for an event that doesn't come. You're exactly right. Yeah. So I've been I've been gathering my layers and Good. walking around in these boots that are pretty darn nice, if I do say so myself. I love those boots. Yep. I like how light they are. Y'all, these are boots made by Skechers. And they're uh, microfiber, not leather. And I think they're waterproof. Um, and the sole is rubber. It looks like a, a tire. But these are so light. It's crazy. So I will wear them. Let's pick and I up. am going to go find myself some of those. And I hope I can find them where I can try them on before I buy them. Uh, is there a place that sells Skechers around? Here? Oh yeah, um, that the one out on Tunnel Road, that shoe place out there does. That's where I get mine all the time. Oh, on Tunnel Road. Mm-hmm. Uh, up there, it's a the designer shoe house, shoe warehouse has them, oh. and also GB Shoes down near um, on Brevard Road. No, on Tunnel Road down there by the uh, Best Buy. No, I didn't know that those were there. Yeah. GB Shoes, um, GB Shoes is on Brevard Road as well. Uh-huh. It used yeah. to be called Arby's. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. And it was across the, the street. Day. Back in the day. Yeah. And then it moved it moved across the street to where it is now, and the place that used to be Arby's became some sort of a fabric place, yep. fabric and upholstery and stuff. Yep. yep. And now that's some high dollar property. I understand. Well, so, isn't in all of it, around, yeah, in everything around here, high dollar. Um, <laughs> one of my Facebook friends today said she tried to go. To see the gingerbread yesterday at the Grove Park Inn and couldn't get in. And then there, everybody was just raging about how Asheville has changed. And, you know, I mean, yes, that is all true. And, yes, the Grove Park Inn will now charge you $25 and sometimes $35 just to park and look at the damn free gingerbread display. But the thing is, who in the world would do that three days before Christmas and think it wouldn't be crowded? People. People. Lots of them. Some people. So anyway, we're getting ready for this big old storm, and I hope you all, you will hear this on Christmas night. That's On right. Sunday. So I hope you all have then survived all that super cold, and that, and I am personally hoping for no ice. Yeah. I would rather have nine inches of snow than a half an inch of ice. Yeah, me too. And I just hope that everybody uses your common sense and does <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I well, can dream. <laughs> all those people who have common sense will use it. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I believe that everybody is that. born with the ability to have common sense. Do you? I don't think I believe that. You don't? No, I do not. Well, it's not just environment, I don't think. No, it's I don't need stuff like that. Okay. All right. Because I know plenty of, you know, perfectly loopy parents who have perfectly sensible children. And the reverse is also true. So oh, yeah. it's, it, there's got to be some nature in there as well as nurture. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. I never thought about that. And <laughs> they, Do you remember that saying, uh, it's got a lot of book learning and not a lot of common sense? And then yeah. there were a few that were kind of, ain't got enough sense to, you know, this and this and this. Get in and out of the rain, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I always kind of, this is going to sound silly, I always kind of resented that. Uh, got book learning like that wasn't important Um, because I have book learning and I also have common sense. So they're not mutually exclusive. Mm, Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You don't have to to agree with that. I disagreed with what you said earlier. Well, I I was just trying to think about it. I know someone who had a lot of uh, degrees and 
just no common sense, none, zero. I lived in a lived in a fantasy world, all of that. But I don't I don't know that I've had much other experience with those kind of people. I don't know. Yeah, I think that some families have have a tendency to have these dreaming people who maybe have unrealistic expectations and they don't use their common sense about things, but then, yeah. you know, so <clears throat> and it's, com it's common sense about being practical. Is that what common sense is? Yes. I think common sense is a way it's a way to be practical in your life. So that means it doesn't hold you up in any way. It aids. And it's like, okay, well, if it's raining and you don't want to get wet, it's common sense to just go somewhere out of the rain. <laughs> yes. I mean, even if you're just standing under a tree or something, that's common sense. But, you know, maybe a lot of book learning about about it would tell you that rain is a phenomenon and it's going to end in 30 seconds because it'll be done or something, you know, and you stand out in the rain trying to observe it and figure it out, figure out how to stop it. That's book learning. <laughs> I think we just wrote a science fiction story. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I'm, are you, do you think you'll ever write a sci-fi story? And no, I think I think I might be more likely to write a fantasy story. Publish that? No, no, no. Uh uh. Oh. I've got a, a a mystery novel right now, a little cozy mystery that's about a third of the way finished. I might do that and do some fiction for a while, but yeah. I don't know. I I may just you know give it up, do some writing on Facebook, blog, that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, it might be time for you to cycle out of writing books for a hot minute, and then the day will come when you feel like you want to write again, and you will. But I don't think you're ever going to start stop putting out creative thoughts in writing. Well, and I'm not ever. I mean, I've been writing literally my whole life, yeah. stories and poems and all that stuff. So yeah. I won't stop writing. But it, so the book that's coming out next year, the uh, Simple Magic's book is my seventh standalone book. Wow. Then I've got this one more coming out. It'll be the eighth. And then I'm going to write, I'm writing this uh, big Appalachia book. The and that will be, what? and that'll be nine. That'll be nine books. And that's plenty. That's plenty yeah. of books. Yeah. You said that was coming out on the eighth. No, no, oh. it will be the eighth book. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's that plenty. Would, it is plenty. You've you've done a lot of work on it. So I think you deserve to take a break if you want to. You'll just have to keep podcasting, keep writing, keep keep doing what you're doing, enjoying your life. You're gonna out you're gonna have creative output. I have no doubt of that. <laughs> you're an artist. I'll find something to do. Yeah, well and that's that's what you I get bored easy, so I have to find something to do. Also <laughs> Even though I'm very old now, not very old, but I'm old now, certainly when I was young, me being bored was a dangerous thing because I'd get into all kinds of stuff. <laughs> like what? Um, I ain't telling. It's okay. I, I ain't telling, but I, I've gotten into all sorts of things being bored. So we should just have the listeners guess. Y'all, what do you think you're talking about? What do you think well, she was getting into? You know, they've heard some of it, all that crazy driving without any lights on. And I mean, I, I'm, I, I don't have a whole lot of secrets, really. I don't think. I mean, I have opinions about things that I don't necessarily want people to know, but I don't think I really have secrets. You have privacy, con uh, yeah. not issues, but you just have privacy boundaries. I have boundaries about that. That is true. And. People go think they know everything there is to know about me because I'm very active in social media. And I yeah. just think, well, OK, that's good. If you think if you think I haven't created it so that it shows me in a particular way, because that's what social media is about. Well, I think that social media world 
is kind of the first entry step into that whole digital world. You know, Zuckerberg has this concept that he calls meta. Have you heard about it? Yeah. It, it reminds me a lot of some of these games out there, Half-Life and stuff that are these situational games <clears throat> where you actually have an avatar and you're moving through the game. And Zuckerberg kind of envisions social media as, as developing into the, this, this 3D holographic kind of life where you're carrying it around with you all the time and you're interacting with it. And, it, you know, eventually if you keep doing that, it's just going to be Wally again. Except <laughs> at least in Wally, they had gotten rid of the damn social media. You know, I, I didn't particularly like that movie, but I find myself reminding people of it all the time. Oh, so you can't even drive your own damn car? Well, did you ever see that movie <laughs> Wally? Because what happens is when we let all the computers and the robots and the whatever do for us, we ain't got enough sense to then create art or exercise or be out in nature or any of that stuff. We just lay around. Yeah. All well, we do is lay around it's just and we absorb a feeling of life without actually ever engaging in life. Exactly. Well, you're in engaging in the digital life. But not the bio world, you see. Yeah. Bio, bio world is what I what I call it, you know, the life that has a physical presence. And if you think about the metaverse, it, it makes sense. To me, it feels like right around 2016, somebody clicked the Viewmaster. <laughs> I love that. That's and, a good image. And it's happened two or three times since then. And so if I go back to 2015, things look extremely different in every way. But th that's that, the way it feels, though. It's like we had the Viewmaster clicked. That is really interesting to me because in 2016 was the year I turned 60. And the year I turned 50, I had a big party. The year I turned 40, I had a big party. I didn't have a party for 60 because I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. And as it turned out, 60, which happened in 2016, was a revelation. I, really? I sped up. I did more. I went more places. I mean, it just it, I was revitalized by turning 60. There was something important about that. So that when I look back at 2015 and uh, and look back at the pre-Trump pre days, I look at that and I have always just associated it with me turning 60. So that's been my view master is mm. the 2016 was that big, uh, important year for me. But that's so interesting that you say that, that other people feel you certainly and other people feel that same way. That's Oh, give him me something to ponder today. <laughs> okay, good. That's awesome because you've done that to me enough times. <laughs> and saying that, uh, saying that, I'm facing the windows out, and these crows that I keep telling you about, one uh -huh. of them just slowly flew right up to the branch right outside the window. So if I wanted to, I, I bet you. I could go out there and have a conversation and throw him some bologna or something. I'm sure that yes, he you could. could. I bet I could get away with that. They, they um, have brought several gifts now. Uh, wonderful. Well, uh, you know what I wonder? I wonder if they are training us. Yes, I think so. I don't know that it is so much. I mean, not that I don't appreciate and I, not that I don't think that the crows or any animal that you're kind to appreciates it. OK, it's not that. I just think that they are practical to the core. And this is something that can help them survive. And so they want to make sure that this new food source stays 
constant. And I really think that they're so smart that not only do they learn your faces, I've, I've had these conversations with the crows where we are learning each other's language. And I'm just 100% sure that they are learning my language while, while I'm trying to learn theirs. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. And so it's real interesting. I, sometimes I think that the gifts that they bring are payment to ensure that here comes another uh, round of food. Does that make any sense to you? It, it does. And it also makes me think that because co corvids are, they are so family oriented. Right. And I think, and I think they ha they include y'all in their family. I really so they, believe it. They and they wouldn't they wouldn't not acknowledge a, a member of their family unit. And so y'all bring bologna and they eat bologna and then they're like, "Well, now it's my turn to bring something." So I, yeah, that's kind of what it feels like. Yeah, and the the ones that are the most active around us, the ones that feel the most at home, um, it would be a family unit. It's a male and a female that are bonded, and they're probably one-year-old. Uh, oh, so they're and, young. Right, and they're the one, they made it in front of us. Ooh. Yeah. That's, so, that's uh, a little too intimate. It's that time they didn't have their son with them, but uh, we saw that it's like I, they feel pretty comfortable around us, you know, but um, they come around the three of them and they have a specific kind of call that they do. The one comes up and he looks out for the other two. The other two hang back and uh, he looks around, make sure everything's cool. And then he has a specific call to say, hey. Can you come outside and bring some food? Hey, I see your car is here. Why don't you come on out with some food? You know, it would be good right now. Yeah, I would love to try some of that food. You know, and I'll <laughs> I'll go and I'll get some food out that I've saved for them, and then I'll walk right outside and I'll be ten feet away on the ground and I'll go. I'll talk to them at that point. You know, they, they know my voice now and I hold, hold up the food and I say, Hey, this is what I've got for you today. Here you go. And, and I'll just toss it out there. And about most of the time, I'll just, you know, stand there and watch them eat. And then sometimes I'll just go on back inside, you know, especially if I'm done and that's all I have. Because I don't need to sit there and stare at them while they're eating. But then every now and then, you know, I'll stand out there and I'll just have a conversation with them. It's it's crazy cool. They're the most interesting animals. They or other spirits is what I want to call them. Yeah. Well, I we've got a family of crows that live out in the in the back. And we've got some maple trees. I would say they're young maple trees. Joe planted them about 25 years ago. So they're maple trees, so they're big, but they're fairly young. And the family lives, seems to live back in there most of the time. They came out yesterday when our yard was full of strangers making big noise. And they came out and they were completely silent. Whoa. They were like, I don't know what's going on exactly. But I'm just going to observe it and see what see what it all is. Hmm. So they did that for a while. Then they got bored because, I mean, it was they, the guys in the trees were doing things, but it wasn't very different stuff. You know, they were in the tree and they'd cut off a limb and in the tree and cut off a limb. Once that was all done by about three o'clock, I heard. Ah, ah, and they had come to see what was done. And they kind of wandered around in the oak tree. Three of them did. Wandered around in the oak tree for a while, like checking out the cables and going, hmm. <laughs> it doesn't look like it did. Hmm, hmm. And you could just see them being, I think, and again, that's me being as crazy as you are. I think they were being really thoughtful about it. Yeah. Like, well, huh. They those those other things were here. 
and now they are gone, and now there is change because they're very observant. Right, right. Um, yeah. It, they were relearning the landscape. Yes, yes. And there is, you you triggered something for me talking, and that is in the my most recent book, I talk about acknowledged kinship, that we are kin to all these things, the trees and the soil and the and the corvids and each other we're kin to all of that whether whether we want to acknowledge it or not we are right. but when you acknowledge the kinship and that's what you're doing with the crows you're saying yeah i'm gonna bring you baloney and look did you just bring me a shiny bottle cap boy that was nice yeah <laughs> And, and and it's when we say to each other, yes, of course we are. Of course we are all related. We are we are all part and parcel of this great blue ball that is the earth. Naturally, we don't even have to talk about that. But right. what I'm saying to you, my corvid friends, is that I get it. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I get who you are. I get what our relationship is. Yeah. And I've I've thought about that because we talk so much an intentional relationship. Oh, we're it's intentional. It's this we are in relationship with, and it just it's gotten to the point where it doesn't mean anything yeah. because of course we are in relationship with everything in the biosphere, right. everything, whether we acknowledge it or not. But to acknowledge it changes the whole level of what it is we are doing. I yeah. think. I think so. That's a that's a deep thought. Deep thoughts by Byron Ballard. Deep you know. Thought. But that's uh, what I should do. I should do me a TikTok and it's just deep thoughts. It'll be like two sentences and I'll do TikTok and I'll go, Well, hey, I'm just thinking today about how crows will eat baloney. Huh. <laughs> that's my thought. Bye now. Yeah. Now, crows will eat bologna. That needs to be a chapter in one of your books. <laughs> yes, crows will eat bologna. That's great. Well, they're fascinating, and I, I don't know what their IQ is supposed to be or anything like that. I know that there's a, an increasing amount of public interest in what scientific community has and the animal community has uh, have observed about them. And I've read a few things. I've seen uh, a few short documentaries on them, and and I've seen some of these, you know, internet personalities. There's one called Loki, <laughs> and it, it, they're mostly they're they're animals that have been captive all their life due to an injury or something. Uh huh. So they they have become pets. And so I'm not a fan of that necessarily. I appreciate that someone saved their life. Okay, but yes. but the the crows and I, I don't want that relationship with them. I don't. I just want to give them some food that might have gotten thrown out otherwise that they will like, and I want to you know chatter with them every now and then. And I think the same for them. They don't. I don't want them to be my pets, and they certainly wouldn't want to be my pets. You know. I've never felt that. I've always felt kind of weird when I would see somebody who would have a wolf that was uh, their their dog or something. And I've always wondered, how does that happen? You know, and how does that feel for the wolf? Well, how that happens is if somebody is arrogant and they want to and they want to see and not, not everybody. Let me back up. Not everybody's like this, but an awful lot of people have wolves and wolf dogs because it makes him feel like a badass. See, I look at me. I travel with a wolf. And I I just think for most people, wolves are way more than you need to be dealing with. Well, I, I know they are more than I need to be dealing with. That's for damn sure. Uh, but, yeah, I've always just kind of wondered, you know, and I, I realize that uh, the, so many animals we've done this to through the years. And it just, see, you know, I, I feel badly about it. But then again, you know what I do? I'm a pet owner. So I really don't have any room to talk. <laughs> well, I've been, I'm going to change the subject a little bit to say yeah. that I have been following the Raven Master at, uh, at the Tower of London on social media. And I follow him. I can't remember if he's on Twitter or Instagram. 
but he, and he posts the funniest pictures of these ravens because they're they are definitely in a relationship and he'll like post one of those straight on pictures with it's got the raven's great big old hooky beak and it's big bright black eyes and and it, it obviously it's just looking right into his phone and he just clicks a picture and probably Aww. gives it some baloney or whatever. But it's been delightful to follow how they do all that because those those animals are they are they're wild animals, but they're also domesticated, which is interesting. Their intelligence and curiosity is what brings them closer into civilization. Yes, exactly what it is. because they just I think they can't figure us out half the time. They can't. Like, yeah, I think, I think they'd be like, what? Why would anybody do something like that? Are y'all, y'all are that's, weird. You, yeah. <laughs> you, you talking monkeys are weird. That's, <laughs> that's what Craig calls us. Talking monkeys? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? Before we end up getting kicked out of this uh, chat yes. room here, or whatever the heck you call these things nowadays, back in my day, um. We need to announce that for the weirdlings, stay tuned. Just yep. stay tuned. We got and something going on, y'all. Yeah. As always. What's going on? What's going and, on? What's going on? And for the rest of y'all, uh, it's Christmas night. So I don't know what that means to you. It's going to be something different for everybody. <laughs> but I hope that you are able to have peace if that's what you want in your evening mm. and just know how much we appreciate when you take the time to listen and i hope we distracted you from anything that might be bugging you unnecessarily <laughs> yeah 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 and you will hear from us again at new year yeah and we will have all kinds of things to talk about then like yeah. uh, shooting anvils out into the air and uh, making a lot of noise and all that stuff. There might be some new music on the horizon. I don't know. We may oh, change the show. Up. You and I have suddenly turned into like Tupperware salesmen or something. I like it. <laughs> we can do that. We can totally do that. Yeah. And and they just, you know, the weirdlings and all of our listeners should go, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course they do something like that. <laughs> Look for some changes in the new year. We, um, we, might have some guests on yeah our podcast and we i know we're going to be traveling more i know we got plans we got plans we do (laughs) so merry (laughs) christmas and i hope santa claus was good and gave you some peppermint candy and a big big orange in the toe of your stocking and maybe even some hershey kisses oh yeah if you're really good that's what you get yeah listen do you hear that it was like on cue the big was crow it the crows? Crow. Yeah. <laughs> when you were saying that, it went da 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 da, just like that. It'll do it again in a minute too. It was saying Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas, yeah. y'all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, happy summer solstice and yeah. Hanukkah. If you're doing that, we're on the what third night of Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Love we're it sliding all. Sliding into the new year, we're sliding into. The new uh, agriculture year, spirals changing. We got a dark moon coming up. No, we're at dark moon now. It was dark moon yesterday. No, zenith of it. Yep. You're right. Which means on Christmas Day, when y'all are hearing this Christmas night, is it will be waxing towards full moon. That's right. And that'll be fun. It will be. (laughs) Are we going into a retrograde anytime soon? Oh, yeah. A whole bunch of them. Oh, God. Whole bunch of them. And if y'all want to know more about that, go to Urania's Well on mm-hmm. Facebook. U R A N I A S Well. And she's a wonderful astrologer. She I knows exactly what she's doing. She sure. does. She knows what the heck is going on. All right, yeah, y'all. I'll make sure and link that. Be good mm-hmm. if you can. Be good. Have some good Christmas wassail, or is that what it is? Wassail. Oh, let's talk about wassail next time. That'd be great. Yeah, and Russian tea. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Had to be made with tang. Tang. I wonder if you can still get tang. 
probably. I think they call it emergency now. <laughs> and you get a time, a, like a table uh, and a packet, and it costs two bucks or something. <laughs> I love it. Well, y'all have have behaviors, as Alicia always says, but right. uh, may this cold season, may you find ways to warm your heart in this cold season. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be yeah. thinking we'll be thinking of everybody and i hope everybody comes through this coming storm safely safe and sound absolutely yeah, check in if you can yeah we'd love that well y'all see you later see you hey bye, bye. byron bye, bye. Have a good trip. You, thank see you, you. Right. see you soon bye bye okay, we'll see you all right, that should give you plenty. It does. Good. It does. So, okay, good. I'll talk to you, I guess, real soon. Actually, you really have a good holiday. Hey, I'll be here for that. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Y'all enjoy your time to go. All right. We'll see you. See you. Bye. Bye. Hey, thank you for spending your time with us here at Weird Mountain Gals. We sure do appreciate it. You know, I know time is the most important thing we have. So I promise that if you take your time to listen to us, we'll take our time to continue to be weird. Many thanks to Sunslice Records for all the help. We couldn't do it without you, Craig. Check out our social media for information, community, or a few laughs. W-Y-R-D Mountain Gals. W-Y-R-D Radio.